Cisco AnyConnect Remote Access VPN, Duo using SAML and Active Directory using the on-premise Duo Access Gateway. So we're gonna protect an application. We'll type in ASA here, and we're gonna grab the self-hosted Duo Access application. So check out the documentation. Lots of good information there. Go ahead and hit protect. We'll put in our base URL. In my case, it's just the CN, so RA-VPN. Then the tunnel group, and then the uh, big one here is the SAM account name for the mail attribute. Once you do that, you're gonna download your configuration file. And we're gonna use this later. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to users and let's create a user. There are lots of different ways of importing users. In this case, I'm just gonna create a uh, sales one user. Go ahead and full name and I'll put in a email address. And we'll go ahead and save the changes. We'll go ahead and add a phone to this user as well. Now there is self-enrollment. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and, and have the user enrolled. We'll go ahead and add that phone. And we'll activate the account. We'll go ahead and send the instructions by SMS. And let's walk through that process here. So here's the two links. One is to install the application. So go ahead and click that. The user can very quickly install the application. Once the application's installed, then we're gonna go ahead and jump back into that text and click the second link. And we'll open that up in the application and there we go. Now you can see here, you could do a health check on the device as well. So you can see that iOS has a newer version that's available and it's letting the user know. And you can have controls wrapped around that. That's not what we're gonna do here, but just give you an idea, right? That you can look for face ID is enabled and you can make these mandatory in order to use the application. Now we're gonna go ahead and configure the dual access gateway. In my case, this is Windows 2016. Um, we're going to go ahead and import module and, and we're going to install web server, web management tools, web CGI, .NET framework, ASP, .NET 45, so, and some scripting tools and the sources are, are D drive. And we'll go ahead and that's uh, happening now. Um, what we'll do here is let's just jump into add remove programs to ensure that um, we do have Visual Studio C++ uh, is installed. There's prerequisites, just have a look at it depending on the version that you're deploying to, uh, to ensure that you have the minimum requirements on your uh, dual access gateway. The other thing to, to make note is, I think the recommendation is to have three of these in your DMZ, right? For, uh, to make sure that they're highly available. Okay, well now we have IAS up and installed. Now we're gonna go ahead and do some configuration. Now I've used self-signed certificates. You do not wanna do that. I had a little bit of a headache to get it imported into the user's machine and everything else to be trusted. Um, so you definitely wanna make sure that you're actually using a proper certificate for this, right? For your dual access gateway, but also for your um, VPN head ends as well. In both cases, I use self-sign. So it caused myself a little pain. I might update this with a, uh, you know, an SSL for free cert and show you how to um, go ahead and get those installed. So we, we've created this self-sign certificate. And this is a fairly extensive video. Like I really try to include every single element that's required for a, a solution to work. So default web gateway uh, or website here we're gonna to wanna to make sure that um, we go ahead and add 443 as a binding. So we'll go ahead and 
uh, we could modify that I guess but uh, I'll just go ahead and add 443 here grab the DAG SSL certificate that we just created go ahead and hit close And then let's just make sure IIS is up and running. And we can see that we are connected through HTTPS. It's not secure. Again, that's that whole self sign. The other thing that I've done is I've already grabbed the software and there's some PHP um, 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 code that you got to download as well, right? And so those links are available in the documentation. I will most likely include them in the notes or at least the link to the documentation where you get that. So I've, I've already grabbed that. I'm gonna go ahead and you can see it's installing Visual C, uh, Visual C++ um, that's required. It's gonna do a reboot, back up and running, and we'll just finish this installation. Now we're gonna to browse to that PHP application that we downloaded earlier. And we'll go ahead and hit next. and detected server host name, this is correct. We'll go ahead and hit next. And if you had additional IPs that you wanna administer, the dual access gateway, you'll wanna add them here. Uh, I'm just gonna use this box and administer right from this box. Obviously you would add your management uh, IPs in here from your management network. Okay, we're just about finished the installation. We'll go ahead and hit finish. And we're connected. Now, the one recommendations uh, they do have in the document in trusted sites, you want to not only uh, maybe include this uh, because of the, the server that you're on, but um, they also mention about um, star dot uh, duo uh, security, I think something like that dot com. Um, again, that'll be in the documentation. Go ahead and create a password here and submit. And you can do a lot of this with certificates and certain uh, trusted zones and users, right? You can leverage group policy objects to push that out to every user as well. So we, we're, we're in the dual access gateway. The next step is really to go to authentication store, source. In our case, we're gonna do Active Directory. And so we'll put in the server IP. Uh, if you have multiple, which you would, um, you know, go ahead and uh, include all of them using a comma to separate them. And most likely you'll want to use, um, you know, LDAPS, right? So I'm just going to keep it fairly simple here. I've included all the attributes based on the documentation. Now for this use case here, um, you could probably get away with just the a SAM account name. Now, when I first built this out, I ended up um, forgetting to uppercase the N in SAM account name. So you want to come, or you won't have to come back, but I did, right? But you, you want to make sure that you get the actual naming structure correct. Search base. So I'm going to start right at the, the root of Active Directory in my case. So DC equals Cisco. Uh, comma DC equals local search app attributes um, you can go ahead and Sam account name again make sure that that n is uppercase it actually mentions it right underneath it um, I just made the mistake initially you're gonna need a user uh, account that can read Active Directory so go ahead and make sure that you have that created and I just used exactly what was in the example and give it, go ahead and give it a password. Save it out. You can see that um, it looks good. LDAP bind succeeded. Uh, go ahead and set that as the active source. 
and now we go into application. So now we're going to browse to that file, right? So we we'll probably have to copy it up here, but that JSON file that we downloaded uh, earlier from the dual console. And once we do that, um, we're going to get the SSO URL, logout URL, the entity ID and the error URL. You can download the XML metadata if you want. Um, go ahead and download the certificate because we're going to need that later. And the next thing would be, uh, let's capture all of these URLs. So um, we're gonna need that for the ASA VPN configuration, right? As well as the certificate that we just downloaded. So let's copy them in the notepad. Um, I'll copy them over to another box that I actually um, am managing the ASA from. So we'll copy these all in, maybe save out the file. I'm also going to copy the file and just add another because um, I'm just going to RDP into another box. But go ahead and save them out so you have them. Perfect. All right. So let's now jump into ASA. I'm going to start this again from scratch. We'll create a brand new uh, connection profile. So we'll call this uh, duo-80-ice. Um, maybe I'll add some ice to this around authorization later. Outside interface, IPsec, we do have a default uh, self-signed certificate. So we'll grab that. We'll go ahead here, next. Now here we can create a new pool if we want to. I already have one, so I'll go ahead and select that. DNS servers, you can go ahead and put in whatever DNS servers on your internal network that you want to use. Hit next. Exempt VPN uh, traffic from NAT. So we'll go ahead and do that. And next. Okay, so now we have a connection profile or a base connection profile. We'll go ahead and quickly go to certificate management. We'll go to CA, we'll go ahead and add, and this is where we're gonna add that dual access gateway cert that we just downloaded from the dual access gateway. So go ahead and give it a name, grab the cert itself, and we'll go ahead and install certificate. Hit okay. Right, wanna make sure you hit and apply every once in a while. There's our group policy here, that's part of this. Um, and again, that was created dynamically when we did the wizard. And what we'll do here is we'll just put a little message so we know that we've connected to this particular group policy. Let's jump back to the profiles and finish this off and do some testing. So we wanna drop the method down to SAML. Don't touch the AA server group. And now we're gonna go into the SAML configuration. So we'll go ahead and add, and this is where we're gonna grab all of those pieces, right? So we'll grab the entity ID, right? And we'll put that into the top piece, and then we'll do the sign in URL. The big thing is, is when you're copying and pasting the other URLs outside of the entity ID is get rid of the HTTPS, right? Or don't copy it when you copy it over, but you gotta copy it for the entity ID. The other thing you have to do is both sign in URL, sign out URL, and base URL. Make sure you change it to HTTPS. Grab your identity provider, that's dual access. Again, self-signed certificate, and then the ASDM one, right? Or the one that we've created for VPN. Go ahead and hit apply and hit, um, uh, hit the box that you want to uh, test with. So we're gonna go ahead, this is a Windows 10 box. We're gonna connect, let's see what happens here. Okay, it's warning me about the uh, untrusted CA. I've already put these in the trusted root um, store, um, both the DAG and the um, VPN certificates. Um, go ahead and hit send push. And again, we can make the decision here if we wanted to uh, based on policy. And you can see the box got the push or the iPhone got the push. There's my little message there. 
We'll go show VPN session, DB, any connect. And we can go ahead and see the group policy that was applied. So pretty cool, right? 15 minutes, took me a lot longer to get it all built out and, and went through a little bit of troubleshooting, but um, checking out the authentication logs here real quick, you can see um, the sales one user was authenticated by and used the dual access gateway, Windows 10, we can drill into this a little bit deeper. It's pretty easy to build out Duo, SAML, um, and Active Directory with Cisco Remote Access VPN.